Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Talk. This is Minister Jay Renee. And like I said, oh my goodness, had such an awesome uh, episode last time that I wanted to keep on going uh, with it and, and do, uh, you know, why it is important to be back in church in person, right? And uh, I pray that this will bless you. But you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about this as as well too. So we are in the middle of a pandemic, and so people have gotten first. You know, at first when we went to the pandemic, I remember this. When we went to the pandemic, everybody was at awe and and was shocked that the church was closed and we couldn't come in uh, inside to fellowship. And I think that the pandemic went so long, we forgot what it felt like to be in person and, and um, you know, with one another. And even though we still take precautions, it's better to be around one another. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Don't get ahead of me. Just give me a second here. So in all of this, I was thinking, I was thinking, or let me just say this was messing with my heart. Even um, on the last episode where we were discussing how millennials were leaving the church, but they weren't leaving God. But in that episode, I don't know if you remember or not, but if you don't, that's why I'm here, um, is to say that, you know, you walk away from what's needed and what's necessary. And so being in church is needed and necessary, even though we can find many reasons why it's not, it's still uh it is still absolutely necessary to fulfill um the part of this journey in living a life with Christ you know I'm you know I'm going to just be straight up so I I say from millennials and I I try to address millennials but you know what I want to say that this episode is really for everybody and so because it is for everybody, or you know, not just millennials, but because there are so many reasons out there now floating why we don't need to come to church. Oh, I can worship at Bedside Baptist and just turn on my TV. Oh, okay, great. Glad that you can do that. But is that really benefiting you? So let, let's take a, a look at this because... I think now the excuses that people find are just the distractions that the enemy will use to get you in the place where he wants you, right? And a lot of intimacy flows out of gathering. And I know that some people say, well, you know what? It is so messy in church. Um, You can use that. But are you going to let people stop you from worshiping? And I can think of instances in the Bible where when some when people wanted something really bad or they had to seek God for it, they were desperate. And desperation does not uh, care what it looks like. So when you are desperate for God, you don't care what you look like when you're seeking him out. And so I think that that's important. And for us uh, to really stay focused on that, right? So everything that God calls you to is bigger than you. Number one, everything that God calls you to is bigger than you, right? So we were not meant to answer the call of God without God. You say, well, God called me to it, so he's sending me to do it. Yes, he is. But in, in one part of that, in one part of him calling you to that, leads you to other people. And if you are not in fellowship, you know, and it, hey, this is great. I send messages uh, you know, via uh, the, the the message taskbar, and I get involved and I participate in worship. But can I just tell you something? Worshiping online compares nothing to being in the house of God, worshiping next to uh, other people and hearing the music live. Oh, my goodness. And letting the atmosphere really minister to you. So, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, but I get that. And I feel the Holy Ghost. When I'm at home, I feel it. Okay, that's great. But so we forget that gathering together with other believers is a necessary part to our growth in Christ, to to our journey. 
that this journey that we're walking on with Christ, I get excited and I stand up and then I'm trying to be calm and sit down so I don't go over uh, just and start running in the studio and the cameras can't keep up with me. But um, whatever God has called you to, whatever God has called you to, if you're going to be effective and you're going to answer and to the full, um, if you're going to give your whole self to it, you got to do it God's way. And, and God has called us to do this thing together, hence the body. <laughs> you know, my finger doesn't go running off uh, without the rest of the body to do the will of God. It cannot. It has to function in union with the body. And so the church is just that. It is just that. And if we look at it, and if we just keep it real, um, you know what? In church you will find all kinds because God has called, God has died to save the entire world. Therefore, there will always be people that you might not be able to connect with right now. But as we grow, we grow together. And so there, there has to be a patience in there that says, you know, I, I want to worship and I want to praise. And it, you know what? We, we worship, we praise. So, so, okay. Calm down, Janine. Here we go. That's me, Jay, for Renee. Jay, Renee, Janine, Renee. Um, let's calm down and let's look at it like this. So when I want to be a worshiper, my worship doesn't stop. Right? My worship alone builds my connection with God. But when I come into the house of God to worship, it enhances it. So there are things that you'll be able to receive in community in community and um like we were saying it's inclusion that's why it's important that when we do come into church we you know what we have to focus on being transformed you know being be, being made new so that we can leave old habits behind forever you know i was speaking mainly of gossip but there are other things that interfere with other people's worship if we don't watch what we do in church. So I guess this is twofold. How we, how we are in church and remembering why we come to church. And if you, so even now, there might be areas in your life um, that are under attack. And some attacks we cannot defeat by ourselves. And, I, and you know, you know I'm going to take us through scripture, right? If you know anything about me, you know we're going through scripture. But I just need to build this up because only part of the assignment can be done uh, as, a, uh, as your initial jump start. But it is always, uh, but it always leads you to others. And I know I just said that, but this is important that, that we know that part of. So you, you, you're called of God. You are called of God. You are called of God. So there's a calling and a sending. So once he calls you, he sends you. And when he sends you, you, you can't go by yourself. Yes, you go with the Holy Spirit. But even in scripture it says he sent them out two by two. He sent them with someone. And you know, sometimes it will be somebody you never in the world would thought that have a, would have a calling similar to yours, that you guys are so compatible that you just make it work and the anointing flows. And yes, you are an anointed, but we are not called to be a part of the body and then not be a part of the body. So it is important that even as we walk away from church, let us do it for a season and then come back. And, you know, I just think that, I just think that, I do think that, but I also know that this is important, that when we come together in person, there is a different kind of presence in and of our life that gives us the courage to do what God has called us to do. And he's called everyone. If you are called into the body, you are called to this thing to be a, a participant, um, to be engaged so that, so, okay, okay. So in relationship, when you get married, oh, you are like 
oh my goodness, it is honeymoon time. Everything is perfect. Nothing is going wrong. Yes, until something that the other person brings out of you doesn't look so good. Okay, that is not the sign to give up and quit. That's the sign to go past whatever it is. And that means there's something coming out of you that makes you better, that allows you to see you for who you are. And, I, uh, and it doesn't matter uh, what you did, what you did, or where you're coming from, or what you look like, or what size you are, whatever it is that people cast you out, or people, people, people say that you don't belong. In the house of God, you belong. You belong. And you will always meet somebody there that will make a connection with you that makes you better, that brings makes you stronger, that removes where people over the years have hurt you, made you weak, but now you're getting strength like you've never seen before. Um, and I'll say this, a lot of my growth has been with the gathering. I can't say that I grew on my own. There's things that the Lord showed me by myself, but then he enhanced. And then when he's dealing with you with a scripture and you come in the church and I can't tell you what happens, but it's a great thing that happens when the pastor or whoever is preaching starts preaching on that word, elaborating even more. Your growth is always continuous. And I want to encourage people that don't be don't be distracted or tricked or manipulated in thinking that when you walk away from church, you're walking away from the church and not God. Listen to me. Because if somewhere in your life that is lacking, then you have to come back to what is needed. And that is community and fellowship. Community and fellowship so that you don't miss every part um, of what God has for you. People want to see a difference now. They want to feel something different. They want to know that God is real. Well, I'm telling you, here we go. Um, the pandemic tried to destroy this, but he's expanded the church. He's expanded the church. Where people can't come in, they are now addressed. But the people who can must continue so that the strength of the Holy Spirit can continue to reach out and do great things. And you are a part of that great thing. And so when I come back after this break, we're going to go right in scripture and I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> Glory to God. And we're going to talk about feeding Jesus on that. I'll see you in just a minute. Get ready. Get ready for the second season of Miss Pat's Neighborhood. I'm your host, Pat Matheson. And boy, do we have an unapologetically black, bold, and beautiful season planned just for you. So buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a wild ride. And you know there's always something good going on in Miss Pat's Neighborhood. So join us each week or on demand at SSC Live TV. It's TV our way. And now we're back. And like I said, here we go. Um, th that this task that God has given you is way bigger than you. And you need others uh, in your circle uh, to help you complete the call of God on your life. So let, let's do this. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, in the text. Now, this is going to be kind of crazy. But guess what? It's in the text. So I am telling you the truth. So I am in the book of John in chapter four, and I'm going to 31, even though I'm up, I have to probably hit some of the earlier part of the scripture, but I am going to uh, verse 31. Because um, I, I want to show you something about when Jesus hungers, when he hungers. So it says, then the disciples began to insist that Jesus eat some of the food they brought back with him with them teacher you must eat something but Jesus told them I have eaten a meal you don't know about puzzled by this the disciples be began to discuss it among themselves did someone already bring him food someone already 
to clarify, Jesus spoke up and said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and bring it to completion. I'm at verse 35. It says, as the crowds emerged from the village, Jesus said to his disciples, why would you say the harvest is another four months away? Look at all the people coming. Now is harvest time. Their hearts are like vast fields of, of ripened grain, ready for a harvest. Everyone who reaps these souls for eternal life will receive a reward. Both those who plant spiritual seeds and those who reap the spiritual harvest will celebrate to, together, together, together with great joy. And this confirms the saying, one sows the seed and another reaps the harvest. I have sent you out to harvest a field that you haven't planted, where many others have labored long and hard before you. And now you are privileged to profit from their labors and reap the harvest. So many from the Samaritan village became believers in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. Then they begged Jesus to stay with them, so he stayed there for two days, resulting in many more coming to faith in him because of his message. The Samaritan said to the woman, Now we've heard him for ourselves. We no longer believe just because of what you told us, but we're convinced that he really is the true savior of the world. So in other words, this woman, and we're talking about, we're in the scripture of the woman at the well. This woman came and she said something to people who were hungry for Christ. And so I am glad, I am amazed at God for allowing his word to keep coming to keep going and to keep going through the, the airwaves even when everything else was shutting down. That's great. That season now has moved into this season and everyone who has heard can now come, can now come and listen and believe. So what do we do when we come into church? We believe that the Lord speaks uh, all over from the pulpit. Uh, from the choir, the Lord is speaking, he's speaking, he's speaking. And listen, it was all of these people by what the lady said. But then they heard and they believed for themselves. They heard and they believed for themselves. And so she was, if we look at it, one woman. Okay, wait, I got to go up because you know what? There is a part in here that I want everybody to see right um and this is when you know the lord jesus is speaking with this woman right who's been married five times <laughs> and the husband that the, the man she was with was not her husband and even in all of that she was honest in speaking with jesus and he said you know what um there's coming a time right and it not and it okay i'm going to read this so i'm at verse 21 it says believe me dear woman the time has come when you will worship the father neither on on a mountain nor in jerusalem but in your heart your people don't really know the uh, the one way they worship but but we jews worship out of our experience for it's from the jews that salvation is available it says our experience in other words you know there's a time when people have to experience the presence of the living god right it says, from now on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with a right heart. For God is a spirit, and he longs to have, and he longs to have uh, sincere worshipers who adore him in the realm of the spirit and in truth. You know what? I actually, hold on, I'm going to read this in something that's even more familiar. Um, and I'm going to go to the NIV. It says, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. The Father seeks. God is spirit 
and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. She says, you know what? I know that the Messiah is coming. In other words, she has an expectation that the Lord is going to show up on the scene. And when we come as true worshipers, God does something very awesome for us. He reveals himself. And so and then in 26, it says, then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, am I am he. And when we are by ourselves, sometimes we are under so many attacks, we don't even realize it. But you know, when we come in together, when we come in together, something happens in the presence of others that breaks something off of you to be able to receive in a way. In other words, I, I have experienced him for myself. I have experienced him for myself. And so sometimes when we're in spiritual battles, we're fighting him in the natural. So we're doing things in the natural that are um, leaving us tired, weary, because we're fighting them. We're fighting against the power that we have no uh, strength over. But when we fight in the spirit, we win. We win. And guess what? When you are with others, there's always intercession. We're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands. We're going to join together in prayer with you. So being in person is not a, a choice. It says, you know, um, I, and you know, I love this because I was thinking about also um, the fig tree, the fig tree. You know, Jesus, every time he hungered, every time he hungered, he was dealing with souls. When they talk about him eating, yes, he was a man and he ate. And you, you see him eating at feast and sitting down and fellowship, the communion. But when he hungered, it was for soul. And if we are by ourselves and more focused on the fight at hand, we lose, we lose, um, we lose sight of our real purpose. We lose sight of our real purpose. And so here's where we spend time um, with the Lord. But when we are with others, we strengthen one another. We strengthen one another. Listen, we can't let the enemy let us continually use things like, oh, well, this person was talking and this person was God. We can't continue to let things happen this way. We, it's time now. It is time right now. People are waiting for us to rise up and come out because they are ready to receive Jesus in their heart. They are ready to see the real and obtain the real and know Jesus for themselves. But if we never bring them because we're at home at Bedside Baptist, then where does that leave them? It actually weakens us. Come on, somebody. I need for the church to rise up, come back together to see the real power of God because I believe that we have forgotten. The, I think the pandemic has been a distraction. I think Everything else has been a distraction. Now it's time to focus. Come back together and regroup. So whenever you're in battle and, the, and everybody gets separated, there is a regrouping that has to have happen. That means everybody comes back together, regroup, and now they re-strategize to go out and win the battle. Yep, yep, yep. You didn't see that coming, but that, that is exactly right. And that is where the church is. It is important for us to be back together in the house with one another. If there's a high five across the room, listen, I believe this, that the Holy Ghost moves within the room and he'll speak so that everything that we need will be spoken to us. And we, listen, it might sound like uh, Pastor Cosby's voice or Dr. Uh, Joe's voice or Reverend Geneva's voice, but guess what? It is the, the words of the Lord coming to speak to your heart. And yes, but to feel the anointing in the room is uncomparable. Uh, but it is awesome to have the word still flowing when we're unable to come into the room. In other words, there's a grace that if you're in your hospital bed and you want to stream from your phone, there's a grace for that. God gives you that. But when we're able to come in and we don't make the effort to show God, I need to really be in your presence. Uh, amongst others, with my brothers and sisters, then you're going to be distracted by the fight at hand because you're able. And when we're able, we have to make a way. We have to make a way so that we can regroup to help our brothers and sisters who are unable. Bless the Lord.
So I just pray that you think about this. I pray that you say, okay, you know what, Lord? I'm going to try it. I'm going to come back in, in the house, and I'm going to be amongst my brothers and sisters, and I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to come in, and I'm going to worship with others present. And I pray this, that you feel his power like you've never felt it before. I pray this, that you hear what you've been missing and what you're waiting for and what you're seeking God for. I pray that it all become clear to you. And I pray, hallelujah, that this will be a new day, a new time, a new way to do things. When I can't be there, I got a way to hear the word. When I can, I'm there in the fight. I'm there in the worship. I'm there in the joy. I am there. Hey, look, be present. The most important thing is showing up. Be present. Hey, this is Minister J. Renee, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Talk.